Welcome back to the next video, everybody. Today we're going to be looking at elliptic curves and their representations as things relate to the flat deformation functor. So let's get into this. Let E over Q be a semi-stable elliptic curve and let P be an odd prime. Suppose that the restriction of rho bar EP to the Galois group of Q bar over Q adjoined square root negative 1 on P times P, so this is the Legendre symbol here, is absolutely irreducible, and that rho bar EP is modular. So for example, let's say P is 3, we would want rho bar E3 restricted to the Galois group of uh, Q bar over Q adjoined square root negative 3 to be uh, absolutely irreducible. Uh, that follows from Langland's tunnel. So um, we've seen this in previous chapters. This was kind of a chapter 6 thing. So what happens then is Wiles gives an inductive procedure, which shows that as n grows, the representations rho EP mod P to the n are modular in a suitable sense, and tight control is kept on the level of the corresponding modular forms, so that one can essentially pass to the limit to conclude that rho EP is modular. And so we've seen, you know, now this requires a delicate interplay between deformation rings on one side and Hecker rings on the other. This is the kind of R equals T phenomenon. That these objects have deep connections is highly non-trivial, as we've seen over the course of the previous several chapters. Now, on the Hecker ring side, you can obtain information through algebraic geometry because uh, these rings act on Jacobians of modular curves. On the other side, so on the deformation ring side, the knowledge comes from Galois cohomology. The estimation of sizes of certain global Galois cohomology groups brings the flat deformation functor to the forefront. Okay, we've even seen this. These groups look like, you know, we called them H1 sub D, you know, G sub sigma add rho, where sigma was some set of primes and D was some deformation type associated to that set of primes. Where rho from G sub sigma to GL2 of A is a continuous representation where A is a suitable local Artinian ring with finite residue field K of characteristic sum prime P. And this kind of curly D here, the script D here, is like well-chosen G sigma deformation problem for rho bar, which is rho mod M sub A, where M sub A is the maximal ideal of A. In practice, you know, when I, when I bring up things in this level of generality here, really what you should be thinking about is rho bar is just like rho bar EP up to extension of scalars on the residue field K, if you want like a specific concrete example to latch onto. The story goes that this D imposes local conditions on G sigma deformations of rho bar <clears throat> at the finite set of places sigma, including P and infinity. Okay, we talked about this kind of at length as far back as chapter four. When applied to elliptic curves, sigma will usually, well, it will always actually consist of places where E over Q has bad reduction, but it, will, it also may contain other primes, which we call auxiliary primes. Okay. The study of type P deformations of rho bar translates cohomologically into the study of elements of H1 G sigma add rho. So this is, a, this is like what I was saying a second ago. This is the Galois cohomology side of the argument, whose local restrictions, so, you know, restrictions to each place uh, in sigma, satisfy certain conditions. These elements constitute the A module H1 D G sigma add rho rather than just H1 G sigma add rho. Okay, so this is what we mean by like a type D cohomology groups. As explained in previous chapters, for any finite discrete G sigma module X with P power order, for example, the Q bar points on the P to the N torsion of an elliptic curve E, the problem of estimating the size of H1 G uh, sigma X reduces to the problem of estimating the size of certain GL cohomology groups for places L and sigma up to some additional but unproblematic study of the dual group H1 D star G sigma X star. I'm not going to go through all this again. This was talked about in chapter four. And also I think, mm, where else would this have been talked about? In the minimal deformation problem chapter. Okay. Among the GL groups whose sizes need estimating, the one which presents the greatest difficulty is when L actually equals P. Okay. Wiles looks at two types of GP cohomology groups, both modeled on the semi-stability of E at P in an attempt to study this case. Before defining these, or I guess recalling these, we will need some preliminary results, and we will allow for p equals 2 in the following discussion. Okay, so first of all, we need to, I guess, like recall what fundamental characters are, although it's not clear to me that I've actually covered this before. Uh, recall that the tame inertia group ITP of QP admits a canonical isomorphism uh, to the inverse limit over n of f cross p to the n, uh, where this is the field of p to the n elements. Uh, non-zero elements, where the surjective transition maps are given by taking norms. Okay, so you can see, I guess, 12.5, we talked about this. 
I don't really remember doing that, but I, sure, sure, why not? Um, the projection, psi n, so there's a projection from the actual inertia group at b onto this tame inertia group. And then you can follow that up because of this isomorphism with a surjection onto f cross p to the n. This is called the fundamental character of level n for qp. If pi in zp is a uniformizer, an alpha sub n in q bar cross p satisfies alpha sub n to the p to the n minus 1 equals pi, then for any g in the inertia group at p, psi sub n of g, there's an explicit formula for it, and it's just g of alpha n divided by alpha n. For example, you can check that the first fundamental character is just the cyclotomic character restricted to the inertia group at p. That's an easy exercise. Okay. After choosing a basis for fp squared over fp, we get an injection of groups, which we'll call j2, from f cross p squared into gl2 of fp. As a two-dimensional fp representation for ip, j2 composed the second fundamental character is semi-simple and hence irreducible. Uh, y hence irreducible. Well, psi2 doesn't take all of its values in fp cross, so it can't be reducible if it's semi-simple. Uh, and this representation remains irreducible under any extension of scalars of odd degree over fp. Uh, once we extend scalars so that fp squared lies in the field of scalars, the representation decomposes into a direct sum of the two distinct characters, psi2 and psi2 to the p, viewed as taking values in the field of scalars. This is covered in a lot of different places. For example, Sayre's local fields, I think, covers all of this stuff. His, um, uh, his open image theorem papers probably do as well, somewhere in there. The key result of this video uh, is theorem 14.3.1, and it says the following. Let E over QP be a semi-stable elliptic curve. If E has either ordinary or multiplicative reduction, then rho EP is isomorphic to epsilon chi star zero chi inverse, where chi from GP to ZP cross is a continuous unramified character. Um, in other words, when you restrict down to the inertia group, you just get like, you know, cyclotomic act action, trivial action, something zero, okay? Okay, in particular, rho bar EP is isomorphic to omega chi bar star zero chi bar inverse, where chi bar from GP to FP cross is a continuous unramified character. Uh, the only other option is that E has good super singular reduction. In this case, the two-dimensional FP representation, rho bar EP restricted to inertia, is isomorphic to the fundamental character of level two. Moreover, rho bar EP is absolutely irreducible, so we don't get this nice representation theory up here. Um, and when you tensor rho EP up to QP, you, you get something irreducible. Okay, so we're going to prove this. We've already discussed the proof in the multiplicative case. That's theorem 1.6.3 in my notes. For the good ordinary case, we need some neuron model stuff. Note that the neuron model, kind of curly E over ZP of E over QP, is an elliptic curve over ZP whose P divisible group has closed fibers with non-trivial connected and at all factors, essentially by definition of ordinary Hence, the p-divisible group of this guy has non-trivial connected and at all factors. That's because formation of the connected at all sequence of a finite flat group scheme over a Henselian local base is compatible with base change by a local map of base rings, such as ZP to FP, like the one we're using here. Passing to the generic fiber over QP and then to Q bar P points, the non-trivial connected at all sequence over ZP then gives the desired composition, uh, decomposition rather, of rho EP. That's because a finite et al. cover of spec ZP has generic fiber spec L, where L is a product of finite and ramified extensions of QP, and base change preserves the exactness of a short exact sequence of finite flat group schemes, hence of p-divisible groups. Okay? In particular, we may interpret the unramified quotient of rho EP, which is the p-adic tape module of E QP bar, as TP E bar FP bar, via the reduction map on points. So this is kind of standard neuron model stuff. All right, so that deals with the good reduction case. What about the good super... I'm sorry, did I say something wrong there? Uh, sorry, that deals with the good ordinary case. Yeah. In the last case, which is where E has good super singular reduction at P, um, let's assume that rho bar EP restricted to IP has the desired form, okay? And then we'll just first prove that rho bar EP is absolutely irreducible. Um, indeed, if rho bar EP had an F fp bar stable line then the eigen character on this line admits a character on gp whose restriction to ip is either psi2 or psi2 to the p by what we have just got done discussing above however it's easy to check that conjugation by a Frobenius element on ip just interchanges psi2 with psi2 to the p 
So neither of these characters extend to an FP star bar valued character on GP, and so Robar EP is absolutely irreducible. Finally, if Robar EP tensored up to QP is reducible, we can scale a generator of a GP stable line to make it part of a basis for the representation space for Rho EP. Reducing this construction mod P would contradict the irreducibility of Robar EP. So we're done if we believe that Robar EP restricted to IP has the desired form from the theorem. Now to prove that, it's actually kind of difficult to do. We're going to need some, uh, some theory from, from finite flat group scheme stuff to proceed. Okay, So we'll take care of that, though. I don't think we'll do that in this video. We'll do that in a later video. Let's just wrap up here. This theorem shows that from the perspective of Galois representations, the ordinary and multiplicative cases should be combined into one case, which Wiles calls ord, or the ordinary case. And then we'll have to treat super singular reduction separately. Okay, and this is where the flat deformation functor comes in. Wiles calls this the FL, or the flat case. And you have to appeal to the theory of finite flat group schemes to actually deal with this case. I've been, I mean, I've been saying this for a long time, like since as far back as chapter one, flatness is kind of the an analog of unramification at the prime P itself. Okay, so it's the flat deformation functor that has to come into play when L equals P specifically. Okay, just a little remark here to, to wrap up. I mean, you do need the theory of finite flat group schemes elsewhere. Uh, you also need it for the minimal deformation problem for certain ord cases. We've been through the proof of R equals T, though. Uh, we just have to wrap up some loose ends regarding the flat deformation functor, which is what this chapter is about. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.